In 2014, the Spotlight on the Digital Project carried out a piece of work that looked at the current discoverability of 217 digitised collections that had received funding from AHRC Resource Enhancement, NOF Cultural Enrichment and JISC programmes between 1998 and 2013. These were collections that came from across a range of UK universities and research institutions. While doing the assessment, we found that some of the collections had become lost to the web over time. Of these, there were 26 cases where the site no longer existed or was marked as closed without any redirection to another resource. Eight cases where the assets had been incorporated elsewhere or the name collection could not be identified within a larger site. And six cases where the site still said it was in beta or there was work in progress or site functionality was broken so the assets were not accessible. In total, we found 40 of the collections out of 217 tested were affected by these problems, representing over £2 million of public investment. In terms of measuring the discoverability of these collections, perhaps the true measure of discoverability should be how many people are at, were currently accessing or using a digitised collection. The assessment carried out by, in the Spotlight project was unable to gather information on the actual use of the collections or what search terms had proved successful in locating an item within the collection. To get this, information would have required access to the log files or web analytics from each collection and this wasn't available to the project. So instead of measuring discoverability through these methods, the Spotlight study designed a series of tests which tried to test the current discoverability using common tools such as web search engines and also it tried to assess how far a collection followed recommended good practice in relation to discoverability. The study carried out 30 tests on each of the 177 collection websites which had a working URL at the time of the study. Nine of these tests were carried out automatically by software and the remaining 21 were done by hand by a researcher. The most striking thing about the results of the tests was the, was the notable difference between collections and items in terms of good practice. The top two charts in this slide show the results for collections and for specific items within collections for two of the measures we applied. The top left chart shows the use of well-formed URLs, that is URLs which followed best practice guidelines such as those published by Google and the W3 style document called Your Eyes Don't Change. The top right shows the use of appropriate HTML page titles, that is titles that were directly relevant to the page, web page. These page titles are used by Google and other search engines as one of the methods for understanding the relevance of the page to certain topics. As can be seen, the collection of pages, that is the home or main pages for the whole collection, performed reasonably well in these measures, but the pages describing specific items within a collection performed much less well. The lower charts in this slide show the performance of the collection and item pages in terms of Google searches, both when searching by the name or title of the collection or item and when keyword searching was used. We can see that this lack of good practice in terms of URLs and page titles on item pages correlates to poorer discoverability of items via search engines when comparing items to the discoverability of items to the discoverability of collections. Since it seems highly likely that most researchers are interested in viewing items within a collection rather than the collection homepage, this is a big issue for discoverability. While the difference between the discoverability of the collections and the discoverability of items within the collections was the no most notable finding of the study, it's also worth highlighting three other findings from the study. Firstly, we found that a high percentage of collections were cited within Wikipedia. This is generally seen as high value usage as we know that Wikipedia is often used as a starting point for research and that people use citation from Wikipedia articles to look at the source information. However, while the numbers seem high, we have, we have no benchmark to compare this to, so it is hard to judge if this is what success looks like in terms of Wikipedia citations. In terms of social media usage, the study only looked at Twitter, using data freely available from, top, from a service called Topsy. There was a significant divide between the highly active and the very occasional and completely inactive in terms of um, tweets which mentioned specific collections or URLs from specific collections. Only 11 of the collections, with, only 11 of the collections had between 21 and 80 tweets in the past year. That is, 2013 to 2014. The distribution in this chart shows that the pattern with using social media in relation to digital collections 
is one of extremes. Those that use social media use it extensively, while the others don't use it at all. There aren't many in the middle ground. The chart also suggests that there is considerable room for more use of social media to promote these particular digital collections. The final, the final finding I want to highlight is that we found there was a general lack of clarity around terms of use and lack of licences in relation to the digitised content of the collections. This was true for both collections overall and items. While this may not affect direct discoverability, so, e.g. for example via Google, lack of clarity around terms of reuse is likely to be a barrier to people using the materials from the collections. In turn, we can expect lower levels of use of the digital collections, and so lower levels of discoverability. For example, if the lack of clear terms of use were to discourage a teacher from using the digitised content of their teaching materials, this would have significant impact on the discoverability of the collection by that teacher's students. In summary, we found that while a number of digitised collections have been lost to the web since their creation, those that were still on the web could usually be discovered by Google if the collection name was known. However, the discoverability of items within the collection through Google was much poorer, and that there were a number of areas where good practice in terms of publishing on the web was not being followed.